thank you, our Father. Thank you, Jesus. As you worship God, as you thank Him this morning, I welcome you once again to church online this morning. I thank God for your life. I appreciate God. I want to tell you that God is going to bless you. Your life is going to be richly blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. The God of heaven will bless you in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you. Just make sure, make it a point of duty to bring somebody on board. That's the work of an evangelist. Because you know it, that your life is always blessed whenever you come on this channel. Therefore, invite someone, let this person be blessed also. And then, because you are already here, don't ask for anything from God. Just begin to thank Him. Even as we enjoy worship with that song going on in the background, give God praise. Tell Him you are grateful. Tell Him you are. He's wonderful. He's kind. He's been good. Glory to God in the highest. Oh. Hey. I declare upon someone this morning, you are about to be declared a blessed soul. Bobisha, or Shetan Lati Bolongore. The only thing you need to do this morning henceforth is to have confidence in God. And that's what we are going to be looking at. Have confidence in God. Be confident about God. Have confidence in God. You are about to be blessed. Have confidence in God. You are about to be blessed. And I'm going to pray with you now and I will bring you the word of God while the music will go down in the background. We're going to pray together now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We appreciate you. We bless your majesty. Aha. We thank you. You are king. You are God. There is no one like you. Thank you so much, oh God. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you for this morning. Be blessed. Be glorified as we bring your word to our generation. We ask that you will use this word, O oh God, to reposition us for breakthrough, for enlightenment, for increase, and that by virtue of encounter with your word this morning, you will declare us blessed. Thank you, Father. We ask that every other power be subdued, every foul spirit be subdued in the name of Jesus. We declare a blessed day, a blessed week, a blessed month, a blessed year in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. And in Jesus' mighty, mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. I'll bring you the word of God from the book of Matthew, the book of Psalms. Let's start from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 2 and 7. The book of Psalms chapter 34 and I'm going to read verse 2 and I also read verse 7 the book of Psalm chapter 34 I'm going to read to your hearing verse 2 and verse number 7 Psalm 34 verse 2 and verse 7 and I read verse 2 of Psalm 34 my soul shall make her boast in the Lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad verse 7 the angel of the Lord, a trumpet round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Let me read it one more time to our hearing. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord, a trumpet around about them that fear God. And they shall deliver them. Can I quickly say to you this morning, I bring unto you good news, and the good news is this. Everyone that has put confidence in the name of Yehushua, everyone that has put his or her confidence in the name of Elohim, listen, the Bible says concerning you, the angels of God, 
they will surround you. Listen, for you that you have truly, you have truly put your confidence in God, you might not know it, but when there is a need for it, you will understand the perimeters of the word I have brought to you this morning. I, I have come to encourage somebody in our generation to come out of your mire clay, come out of the doors, come out of these years, months of dependency on man, on flesh, and put your confidence in God. Someone needs to arise this morning and begin to build confidence in your heart about God. Have confidence in God. You are about to be declared blessed. The Bible says, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Your heart will be so rigid. Well, your heart will be boastful concerning the eminence of God, concerning the prevailing powers that is resided in God, concerning the totality of the being called Yehoshua, the maker of heaven and earth, the earth shall die. I have put my confidence in God, brothers and sisters. That is why I am not moved. I am not perplexed. I cannot be encroached upon by fear or intimidation there around. No, sir. Why? My confidence is not in the arms of flesh. My confidence is in Yehoshua. It's in Elohim. It's in the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Have confidence in God. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. This God of heaven that I'm asking or encouraging someone to put confidence in this morning. Do you remember this God, the Bible says he speak at once. Twice we had it that power belongs to him. He's the only one that has your defense, your defense in hand. He's the ultimate defender of your, of, of your life. He upholds you. As a matter of fact, the Bible says everything resides in Him. We have our being. We move. In Him we move. In Him we live. In Him we eat. In Him we breathe. As a matter of fact, the breath of life in your nursery is as a result of the mercy, love of this Almighty that is extended to your life. Hallelujah. I've come to encourage someone this morning, brothers and sisters. And I have a feeling you are that brother, you are that sister. That it is time you begin to be, if you don't have confidence in God, begin to be. You have put your confidence in a man for too long. You have placed so much confidence, reliance in a woman for so long, for too much. And that has failed you. That has not gotten you to anywhere. You have depended so much on cash money, on gold, on raw materials. You have put confidence in government. You have put confidence in the people that appear suddenly to be in the leadership position of your life. You depend so much on them. You rely so much on their work. Some of you have put your confidence in the, in the public media, in the mainstream media. But have you not seen? You have actually seen. What has happened is that you have been conditioned to accept that situation as the status quo. You have been conditioned to accept that that is how things are. That is the true pictures of the earth. Uh, there is something inside of you deep down that is making you to think this is not the true pictures of things. This is not the reality. This is not it. But you have accepted it because it's as if you are, there is nothing you can do about it. Listen. It has failed you. It has failed me. It has failed us for years and for generations. I want to encourage somebody this morning. It is time you begin to build your confidence in Yehoshua. It is time you begin to build your confidence in Yahweh, in Yah, in Elohim, in this El Shaddai, in this our God, the God of Hebrews, the God of the heavens and the earth, the almighty God. I love what David wrote in Psalm 20, verse 7 and 8. We read this almost every Sunday in my church. Psalm 20, verse 7 and verse 8. Every time we say silent prayer in my church, before we pray over the silent prayer, we read the scripture. Psalm number 20, verse 7 and verse 8. David wrote something spectacular. Psalm 20, verse 7 and verse 8. Verse 7 says, Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. It says, But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Listen, there is nothing wrong in having physical uh, ammunition as a defense. Oh, you mean if you are licensed in advanced countries and you are you, you you have access to get the license, or you want to get a gun, yeah, it may boost your confidence. 
But have you, haven't you heard of men that has guns? That have that got one, two, three guns at home, and uh, other humans, other men who are also wicked, much stronger than them, invaded their homes and they still killed them. But they've got guns at home. That tells you that these arms of flesh can fail you. I'm not saying not. I'm not saying anything is wrong in having the arms of flesh around you, but it can't be your confidence. You mu your confidence must be in the Almighty God, in Yahweh. The Bible says some put their trust in chariots. Chariots can be a means of defense, but it can never be your strength. It can't be your ultimate uh, source of confidence. It will be a failure. He says some put their trust in horses. Your horses can be a source of defense. You know, you can climb on horses and your speed will be faster when you want to run from danger. But it can't be your dependence when it comes to having confidence in safety, in defense. That's why the Bible says in verse 8, he it says, They are brought down and falling, but we, we are risen and we stand upright. Why are we standing upright despite the attack? Because in verse 7 it says, we will, While they are trusting chariots, while they are trusting horses, we put our confidence in God. We remember the name of our God. What do you put confidence in? What is your confidence? Oh, the money in your bank account. I tell you it can fly away. The Bible says money can grow wings and fly away. Oh, I don't want to mention names. I'm sure you know. Haven't you heard of great men who are into sports and that were billionaires in pounds, in dollars, in yen, in euro, but suddenly they are now in abject poverty? I'm sure you begin, your mind will begin to flash around and you begin to pick some signals. Listen, I'm not making just of them, but I'm just trying to tell you that anything can happen in this our life. Where we this part of the this part of life that is called earth, anything can happen at any time. Listen, your ultimate source of confidence, defense must be Yahweh, must be God. Because I know there is someone who goes to church. There is someone who is committed to the activities created by men in the name of synagogue, in the name of church. And you are actually not a man or a woman that have confidence in God. You still have, as a matter of fact, your confidence is actually the society you belong to. That building, that church building that you go to, that is your confidence. Some of you are even having it in your own heart. If you have crisis today, the first point of contact is to pick your phone and call your pastor, your shepherd. Because that's your source of confidence. Meanwhile, that man is just a man. As a matter of fact, he doesn't pray for you. He, as a matter of fact, he doesn't remember you. Do you know how you will know? Stop attending church for three Sunday, four Sunday. Let them not see you and see what will happen. You will be forgotten. Somebody else will have been attending and given the offering that you are giving. If I do show that you are not coming, I'm telling you. As long as the lifestyle of the man at the helm of Afia is not changing. Yo, who, who, give, who gives anything about you? No, no, no. You are not in the book at all. I'm telling you. You are just, uh, you are just a number. But there is somebody who will not make you just a number. If he sees that this one has decided to put his confidence in him. And ultimately, it is only those who put their confidence in God that will be delivered, that will be saved, that will be rescued. Especially as our world keeps on crescendoing, keeps on going into the latter stage, the, the very end. We are, we, are, we are getting there, brothers and sisters. Our world is collapsing. Our world is rounding up. Oh, the AD. Yeah, somebody might say, well, I mean, it might, it might not even round up in the next 200 years. But do you know one thing? It can fold up tomorrow morning. It can fold up before the end of year 2023. We are rounding up. We are rounding up, brothers and sisters. And like I always say, the main commodity on the table in the market is your soul. There is a power that wants you to lose your soul. There is a devil that has made up his mind that ah, you are not going. You are, you are not going. Because his, his hatred for God is just too much. But well, there's nothing he can do about that. He may hate God. He will continue to hate God. He won't like God. He is attacked, his focus is you, God's soul, you that have the breath of life in you, so that you won't end up with God at the end of your life. No, you must end up with him. Because life is eternal. Your life is eternal. We only habitate in this physical body. By the time we go out, your life will gravitate upwards and you appear before your maker, before Elohim. And that decision will be taken concerning what you what, concerning your life. Why not make him your confidence now? Why not make amendments now so that confidently, by the time you finish inside this bunker body, confidently you rise out and begin to march in Zion. You begin to march up into Zion, march up into glory with armies of God guiding around about you, the angels of God, heralding your arrival, even when your head appears in Zion. Hallelujah. Sammy says they put confidence in chariots. What do you put confidence in? Is it your finances, your business? Oh God, 
I have come to encourage. <coughs> excuse me. I have come to encourage this morning. Let your confidence be in God. Let it be in Yahweh. Listen to me before I leave you this morning. We are going to pray together. But listen to this. Listen to this. There is what I call a great curse. Instantly at the same time, there is what I call a great blessing. Just because of you putting your confidence in God or not putting your confidence in God. Hey, oh. <laughs> hey let me hear that background music again. Listen. There is a great curse. There is a great blessing that is only determined by you putting your confidence in God or not putting your confidence in God. Let me show this to you and then we are going to pray together. Somebody will condition his heart. Somebody will speak in the, in the language of the spirit this morning. Somebody will touch the throne of grace. Somebody will arise and say, Lord, I condition my heart from this moment to be confident only in you and you alone. Listen, my confidence is not going to be in the man of God anymore. Your confidence is not going to be in the church anymore. Your, the, I tell people, church is a resource center. The resource is El Shaddai, Elohim. You must arise. Your confidence must be so built that it will be in God alone. And listen, for those of you that other men are still putting fear in your heart, other men using the name of God, using church, using fellowship, using spiritual meetings to create fear in your life, to actually direct you, to monitor you, to manipulate you. Don't forget manipulation, direction. You know, controlling people's entirety of life is witchcraft. Churches practice witchcraft this days and we don't know it. Meanwhile, it's because your confidence is not in God. Your confidence has become, has been in what has been created. The taboos, the, ta the rules, the tenets, the, the guidance that have been created by man, not even by God, not even scriptures. A great cause and a great blessing just because you decide to put your confidence in him or you chose not to put your confidence in him. Let me take you to that scripture and then we'll enjoy that music again. Hold on the music. Jeremiah chapter 17. Tell Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 and 6. After I read the scripture, I will play that music. We'll be praising God. You'll be praying. You'll be doing whatever you want to do in God's presence this morning. It's a morning of freedom to touch the hem of his garment. But while you are touching the hem of his garment, you must attach it to something in your life. And what I want you to attach it is this. God, take my heart. Yield it by your power to yourself. Be, give me confidence in you. Let embodiment of confidence come upon my soul. I'm no longer putting my confidence in church, in synagogue, in a pastor, in a bishop, in a general pastor, in a shepherd, in a prophet, in an apostle. No, my confidence shall be only and only in God. Hallelujah, somebody. Jeremiah. Chapter 17, verse 5 and verse 6. Jeremiah, chapter 17. And I'm going to read to your hearing this morning, brothers and sisters. Jeremiah, chapter 17, <clears throat> verse 5 to verse 6. Jeremiah 17, verse 5 and verse 6. Can somebody listen carefully? Thank you, you have written it on the screen for me. Can you write it like five times, please? Five or six times. Repeat this severally. I want somebody to listen to this. A great blessing. Jeremiah 17 verse 5 verse 6. A great blessing and a great cause that is created, determined as a result of your decision whether to put your confidence in God or not to put it. So, and when you don't put it, that means your confidence is somewhere. Either in your pastor, in your leadership, in your shepherd, in your prophet, in your group leader, in your apostle, in that man that says, hey, 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 don't say the Lord. Hey, 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 God said to me, I should tell you. No, 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 no. God, yeah, God can speak to a man to speak to you. There are prophets that are prophets, by the grace of God, I am a called prophet of the Almighty God of Yehoshua. But I have to let you know the truth, sir. I have to. Your confidence must not be in me. The same way God has given me a call. He may not give you a call, but he, you are his son. He can speak to you. He can give you guidance and directions. Hallelujah. You can hear from him. Amen. He, as I say to you again, what we have I've told you, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 and 6. You can read it at your own time, but I will read it here. This 
guys, these blessings are decided based on your decision to put your trust in him or to put your trust somewhere else. Let me read it to your hearing. Thus said the Lord, but ye know who are Lord. This is not thus said the prophet. This is not thus said my shepherd or my pastor or my prophet or my apostle or my Jew or my bishop or my dick your dickness or my evangelist or my superior evangelist. No, thus yet the Lord caused, caused be the man that trusted in man and maketh flesh his arm. Whose heart departed from the Lord. Can you see the subtle judgment of heaven over your soul for not putting your trust in God? God has taken a decision. I'm reading Jeremiah. I'm just reading chapter, chapter, chapter 17, verse 5. God said, a, a man is caused. A woman is declared caused. Why? For putting his trust in the arm of flesh, in a man, or in things, or in circumstances, or in decisions made by men. Or rules made by man, or, or, or dictates of men that are called apostles, that are called pastors, that are called shepherds, that are called bishops, that are called general church founders. The, the, they are dictates. If that is what you put your trust in, the Bible declares you as a cosmos. But look at the subtle judgment. It says, because your heart is departed from God. God concludes. The conclusion of God is that your heart has departed from God. Can you imagine? Meanwhile, your heart might not have departed from God. But God's subtle judgment over you, over me, when we put our confidence in any other thing, is that your heart is as departed. Okay, it is shako. Your, your heart is no more for me. Your soul is lost. That's the minister. Jesus, that's, that's big. Can you imagine the level of curse? Your heart is a judge by heaven that is already departed from God just because you develop confidence in money. You develop confidence in the rules of men, in the dictates of the church, in the doctrines of the of your church, in your leadership, in your man of God. Oh, hello, sir, daddy, multitudinal, I dropped again. Hello, pastor. Said, hello, prophet. Hello. No, sir. That confidence must be in God. Verse 6. For he shall be like the heat in the desert. Oh, my God, so many in Europe. Oh, no, my dad, be... A lie, you'll be like a waste land. The life was such a bad. Your life might appear beautiful, but it's going to end up as a waste. That's what the scripture says. Say that man will be that woman will be like a man that like a wasted land, like a desert, like a land that will never be inhabited, that will never bring forth anything good, whether now or later in life. Can you imagine the level of curse? Just because a man took a decision, just because a woman took a decision to put his confidence in something else, whether that thing is a thing or is a human or is finances or is in business or in anything. Bible says your heart has departed. Look at that every cause. But look at it. In that same chapter, verse 7, he said, But blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. Oh, your Lord will share it. He, you hope in God, God declares you blessed. You put your confidence and your trust in Him. The Bible says it declares you blessed. And it's not just declaring you blessed. Look at what it says concerning declaring you blessed in verse 8. I didn't put verse 8 the other time. I intentionally left it. Verse 8, it says, For you shall be a true, like a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. Can you imagine? Do you know the meaning? You have you are you are joined to the source. <laughs> you are you as a matter of fact, before you know it, your life will become a resource center. Your life will become a church. That's what God is saying. Your life, your pattern of life will become a church. I told you, church is a resource center. Church is not a source. This I will keep hammering until it sinks into the heart of somebody. I attend church, sir. I lead church, sir. I lead church. I attend church. Church is not your source. Church is a resource center. Your source is Elohim. And God says, if you build confidence in God, in Yahweh, if you build confidence in Yah, if God is your hope, your life will be so blessed that God describes you. Your pattern of life will become like a church. You will now become like a resource center. People will have to look at you and draw strength. Your life will now begin to connect others to God because that is what church is meant to do. 
Hallelujah. You, your confidence, your life will be, Bible says you will be like a tree planted by the riverside, whose root is spread out into the waters. You are connected to source. You can't dry up, that's the meaning. You will be flourishing. Devourers can't come into your system and eat you. It's not possible. If, I, if, they came, if they come in, you won't know. Your life will not know because it will, it will not uh, take out a stand of hair in your life. Do you hear what I said? Imagine you can't get in the room. 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 They die. They, you won't even know that they have come in and eaten and died because you will be so flourished. And your flourishing will not be uh, a stagnant one. It keeps rising. And that's one thing about God. The Almighty God is the only one that can make you to keep rising without stoppage. Rise, and there won't be end. There won't be limit to your rising. Can you imagine that level? Listen to me, brother and sister. The high that God wants you and I to achieve, that's my message to you this morning. You can't get there by the arms of flesh. You can't get there. The level, the high God wants, determines for us. None of us can get there without God. So why are you not living life? Why are you going the journey of life without that same God? Can I ask somebody this question? Why have you not genuinely given your life to Jesus? I almost, te- I'm being tempted to say that there's something wrong with us. Why? What, what's stopping me? After have re- hearing this kind of thing, understanding this precept, uh, this thing has been fully exposed to me. And I see, I, I can read it myself. So what's stopping me from surrendering my life to Yahweh, to Elohim? Why not follow his only begotten son, Jesus Christ? What's stopping you? I want somebody to live a life that is called life indeed. The Bible says Jesus came that we may have life and life in the full life indeed. He wants to give you life indeed. So what's stopping you? Can I invite you? Come on, come on, stop this. Stop this, man. Let me invite you to be a member of this kingdom. If you have not, take the decision now. It doesn't cost you anything. Invite him into your life. Tell him you are sorry for being a sinner, for for going astray before. And then speak to your heart. Let me play music to your hearing and then you begin to pray wherever you are. Just begin to speak to God. Lord, stretch your hands into my heart. Stretch your hands into my heart to God. Come on, somebody pray, pray, pray. Yeah, enjoy the worship of prayer. Begin to pray. Lord, send your hand. Stretch your hands. I'm done. Just go ahead and speak to him this morning. In the name of Jesus. Hirajama, Jaripa, Hirajama. Farasale, Farasale, Alali. Tiresi so, Tiresi so, Farasali, Lord, arise. Stretch your hands into my heart. Build your confidence in me. I speak to my main body, my soul, my spirit. I realign my life. That's the kind of talk I want you to have this day. I realign myself to Jehovah, to Elohim. Everything holding me back, I break loose. I break loose from you in the name of Jesus. I arise in confidence in God. For those of you who are just surrendering your life to Jesus, you can reach out to me and you can reach out to the pastor of your church. Let them know that you are now genuinely a child of God. You have given your life to Jesus. You are now a believer. You are now following God don't get me. You are no longer following the rules of men, but you are following the rules of God. And if you want to reach out to me, the broadcast number is there just for me to encourage you more to pray with you, give you some guidance one-on-one, and that's it. You are saved. You are now welcome to the kingdom. Every one of us together now let's begin to speak to God. Lord, touch my life. Let your fire ignite me. Let your spirit fill me. I want to trust you. Let the happiness around me reflect the glory of God, the presence of Yehoshua. Let the things happening around me henceforth be a testimony to the fact that the presence of Elohim is with me. Glory be to God in the highest. Thank you, Father. Mayanda kutava leke teliadaya. Ori daiki fa kalimaya. Lord, arise for my sake. Lord, I hear me. Lord, I'm a dake. No word but I see me. Stretch your hands of power. Stretch your hands of anointing upon me. I want to trust you only and only you. My soul must not be lost. The souls of every listener must not be lost. And I hereby pray for you. You will prosper. You will dwell in safety in the land. You shall not die. Begin to say amen. Begin to type amen. 
you will not die. Your children will not die. I pray for you, it is well with you. You will excel. Henceforth, the lions will fall unto you in place and places. You will have goodly heritage in the name of Jesus. I declare you blessed. On behalf of God, I declare you blessed. I declare you blessed. I declare you blessed. You are not under curse anymore. Every curse over your life is broken, it's cut out, it's destroyed. Your life is a glory. You will shine. Go and succeed. Go and make it. Go and get that good job. Let your businesses be set up. You are established, I prophesy, by apostolic declaration. If you are looking for the fruit of the womb, I decree, receive your children. Manda Katalia Daya. Every evil hands that has been stretched into your head, I break them. I destroy them. Receive your sound health. Every pain in your body to disappear. That my green is cancelled. Every oppression that may take your life is cancelled. I release you to good health. You are settled. You are settled. You are settled. In the name of Jesus. By apostolic and prophetic declaration, I pray for you. Your soul will find rest. Your soul will find peace. You will enjoy God in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Hallelujah. Somebody type hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody type amen. Receive it, receive it, receive it. In the name of Jesus. Take one minute now. Say, Lord, I thank you. Worship him, worship him. Tell him you are going to have confidence in him. Tell him, not me. Tell it to God. Say, Lord, I, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Just thank God bless you, Sonia. God bless you, Manabe. God bless you, Mojisola. God bless you, precious. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless everyone. God bless you. Every one of you. I don't need to mention your name. God bless you. God bless you. Say, Lord, thank you. Wave to Jesus. Wave to Jesus. This might be your church for today. You are done. You are good. And if you can still go to church, attend church. Remain blessed. You know, make the word of God your anchor. Everything will work for you. The Bible says for those who are called, you are called. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of Elohim. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I bless you once again. I pray that God's eyes will shine upon you. The Lord will make his eyes to shine favorably upon you. You will go out this week. You will find favor. Everywhere you turn to, east, west, north, and south, you will find the favor of God. You will find the mercies of God. You are blessed. You will not suffer. You will not lack in the name of Jesus. Good things will come your way. Good opportunities. You will laugh. Your joy will be full. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you for your spirit this morning. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm so excited. I'm filled with the joy of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God in the highest. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. If you came late, make sure you listen to the broadcast from beginning to the end. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe, like the page, subscribe, you know, like this broadcast, like this very one, subscribe, click the notification button so that when we come live like this, you will be the first to receive the notification. It's always good to come on this channel because you will come and your life will be blessed. God bless you. In Jesus' name. I'm your friend, I'm your brother. My name is Evangelist Prophet Kule Omoshehi. I am the set man by the grace of God, you know, leading this church online under the auspices of Gospel Response Ministry International. The Lord bless you richly well in the mighty name of Jesus. I appreciate you, I thank you, and I will see you some other time. Remain blessed. Keep riding in God's glory, keep riding in God's anointing. Keep enjoying the blessings of God. I will see you at the top. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name.